Welcome one and all to the first in the series of RealFlow tutorials where I'm going to be covering the basics of RealFlow. So in this video, it's just a really short video, just an introduction into RealFlow and we're going to be taking a look at the user interface and also keyboard shortcuts. So let's start and have a look at the user interface and find things that we're going to need. So first off, let's talk about the navigation. So to navigate and move around your scene, you're going to want to, if you're on Apple, it's Option, or if you're on Windows, it will be Alt. So if you hold down Option or Alt and left click, that allows us to rotate around the scene. And if I just quickly put a, a sphere in it, just so we've got something to look at. So if you hold down Option or Alt and left click, that allows us to rotate around the screen. If you hold Option or Alt and right click, that allows us to zoom in and out. But I ran into a problem and you may do the same. I'm on Mac and I'm using a magic mouse and if you've got a magic mouse you will know that it hasn't got a middle button mouse and that's pretty crucial within RealFlow because to move around your scene, to pan around your screen you need to hold down the option key or alt if you're on Windows and the middle mouse button. So if you've got a a magic mouse it can be a little bit tricky but there is something you can do there's actually a program called magic prefs you can see it down here in my system preferences and it's free you just type it into Google and basically what it allows you to do is map certain um, either clicks or taps to your magic mouse so what I've done I've enabled it so the middle when you click in the middle of the mouse that acts as a middle click so that's how to get around using real flow with a magic mouse so if you do if you are on apple and you have got a magic mouse just download magic prefs and you should be fine or alternatively if you've got a just a normal mouse you can use that as well so we've got left click to rotate right click to zoom in and out and middle click to pan so that's no navigation next let's take a quick look at some of the main tools that we're going to be using so I'm just going to add a different object here um, rocket that seems pretty cool so the tools that we're probably going to be using the most is the move scale and rotate tools so if we have a look at the icons up here we have select move rotate and scale so the move tool obviously allows us to move the rotate allows us to rotate and scale allows us to scale and the keyboard shortcuts for these are W on your keyboard is the move tool, E is the rotate tool and R is the scale tool. So if you're used to working with Cinema 4D it's just one key along so usually on Cinema 4D the move tool is E but you just have to move one up in real flow so W for move. So it's W for move, E for rotate, and R for scale. So that should save you some time. Okay, so next we're going to take a quick look at the emitter tab. So if you head on up to the top bar, and we select the emitter tab, which is represented by the three blue dots, and we select that, and then we get loads of different emitters. So we've got a circle emitter, linear, triangle, fill object, all that good stuff. So if I just select the most basic one which is a circle here and hit W on the keyboard so we're able to move. We can move this up here like so. So this is our basic emitter and on the left here we have our nodes. So this is where everything will be. So if you've got objects and emitters this is where they will be under the nodes 
and if you want to change any of the parameters you just come over to node parameters on the right hand side here and we have loads of controls for this we won't get into it too much in this lesson but in the future we're going to be delving in deep into real flow and its liquidy goodness so now we've got our basic emitter in there if we head down to the bottom here you can see our timeline it's currently set to 200 frames that's fine and on the right hand side of the timeline you're going to see a simulate button and this is used for basically playing or calculating your your real flow particles and meshes so if we just hit simulate you're going to see we're going to get these particles coming down from the emitter and then hitting the rocket might be better if we just scale down this circle for the moment so we want to hit R on the keyboard and that's going to allow us to scale down and then we might be able to see a bit better the particles bouncing off the rocket so if I hit the down arrow on the keyboard that's gonna take us to zero frames on the timeline and then just hit simulate again and it says do you want to overwrite the data we're just gonna say yes and now you can see we've got a little bit more interaction in between the particles and the rocket and if you just hit escape at any time when it's simulating it will stop simulating so if we take just a real quick look at some of the parameters of the circle emitter so the type we have liquid gas dumb dumb particles are if maybe the particles aren't really doing much if you select dumb particles that's gonna allow us to simulate a lot faster and we've got elastics and scripts so you can play around with the different gases and liquids and all that good stuff the resolution is if I bump up the resolution to 10 and then I hit command A or control A all data will be reset are you sure yep that's just saying are you sure you want to reset everything and if we simulate now you're gonna see by upping the resolution that basically adds a lot more particles so that's what the resolution does the viscosity is how um, thick and sticky it is for example so if you've got a really thick sticky liquid you'd want to increase the viscosity and surface tension so if I just turn them both up to 10 that's probably a bit OTT but we'll be able to see the difference hopefully and I'll just simulate now you can see already that it's looking a lot more gloopy and all that good stuff and if I just pause the simulation for a second and we take a closer look at the emitter you can see that the particles are coming out in a grid formation and that's all right but you might not necessarily want that and to do that you'd want to come to over to the node parameters circle and you've got v random and h random so if we just set that to five and we'll set the h random to five as well press the down arrow that's going to set us back to zero on the timeline and we're ready to simulate maybe that's a bit too much randomness we'll just set this to one and one so it's always good to maybe if you're not sure what an effect does just bump it up and if we just simulate this now and see how this is looking so you can see now they're not coming out in a grid formation they're coming out a lot more randomly so that's cool it's what we're after so next let's take a quick look at some of the demons so if you come to the tab right of the emitters 
this is our demons tab and if you're familiar with working in cinema these could be compared to um, effectors in cinema 4d so you've got loads of things like wind gravity effector all that good stuff so if you're familiar with effectors in cinema 4d you should be right at home with this so you've got gravity so let's add gravity and we'll add a kill volume now what the kill volume is is if we resize this box by hitting R on the keyboard just resize this a little bit hit W to move so the kill volume demon acts as anything outside this box so if the liquid falls outside of this box it will stop so if we just have a quick simulate here and you're gonna see once the particles hit the edge of this kill kill volume it will actually kill the volume of the particles so that's pretty useful if I just press escape and stop simulating we take a look at some of the other demons we've got the attractor that's pretty self-explanatory wind vortex vortex is um, is like turbulence so you get some really cool movement from your particles or liquid and there's loads of different ones there's we'll get onto this more in future tutorials got drag force and filter filter's pretty cool that's used for creating melting effects so if you want to have the rocket melting away that will be done with the filter and fill objects but we'll once again we'll get onto that later oh and there's just quickly one more thing that I want to go over before we finish this lesson is there's if you ha have a look at the simulate tab there's a little arrow on the right hand side of it if you select that and then select options here we have the FPS output so currently it's set to 30 frames per second and that's good but if you wanted maybe slow motion liquid you'd set this to maybe something drastic like 150 and if we simulate now you're gonna see it's a lot slower maybe we could even up this even more so maybe go 350 see how that looks try and simulate this so yeah you can see it's getting even slower so if you want some really cool slow motion liquid kind of thing that's how to do it but I'm just gonna set this back to 30 frames per second so that pretty much wraps it up for the basic user interface and keyboard shortcuts in RealFlow 5. Really hope you enjoyed it and found it useful. Stay tuned for loads more RealFlow tutorials. We're going to be delving in deep to RealFlow. So I hope to see you back here very soon for another video tutorial. And I will see you all very soon. Thanks for watching everyone.